everybody. Thanks for showing up and listening to me chat today. Uh, I'm Pete Lumbus with Cumulus Networks. Uh, we've got a booth right over there next to Suze. We're the green turtle, not to be confused with the green lizard. Uh, we are a network operating system company making software for data center switches. And I'm going to talk to you today about streaming telemetry for open networking and compute infrastructure. So some things that you already know, this isn't going to be news to you, but the open infra, open stack movement is, is extremely powerful. Right? We've really changed how private clouds are built and operated. You know, the pace of innovation has been amazing. Last year's keynote, or I think it was the Berlin keynote, they said that there were over 70,000 commits in 2018. You know, the project continues to move forward and continues to grow. And we've had huge advances in the different projects, whether it's data collection or CI CD or root cause analysis. I mean, the, the umbrella of open infrastructure grows and grows and provides more and more tooling across the board. But networking is truly being left behind. And this isn't true of just open infra, but in general. You know, physical networking, right? Not the virtual networking, not the overlay, not OVS, but the physical switches that our servers are plugging into is a huge laggard in the industry. We have these non-standard interfaces, not just between vendors, but between versions of software within a vendor. If you're really, really lucky, you can get non-versioned structured output. If you're unlucky, you're still screen scraping. We have very limited user interfaces and little or no third-party software. So even if I wanted to install a piece of software, a package on that switch, can I? And if I can, what dependency challenges am I, am I going to have or what visibility is that package or application going to have into my switch? And we have no Linux standardization. So many of these vendors use the phrase Linux-based, right? And what they're doing is they're using Linux kernel, wrapping it, and then building a bunch of stuff in user space, never to be seen again. And so we have a kernel for memory management, and maybe you know, CPU scheduling, but that's kind of where the Linux standardization ends, which again is unique in the network space. And so trying to get data out of network switches feels a little bit like trying to find the files in a computer. And you know what? This is only making things worse. So what do we do when we're building clouds and infrastructure? We ignore networking. We do everything we can to not have to think about it. We build overlays to abstract the network away. We think, how do I do more compute with less network interface? How do I do more and more servers, more and more compute work, and more and more complexity on the compute side without ever talking to my network team because they are the worst? And I say that as a network engineer. We are the worst. You know, I, I was looking for a good picture to illustrate this. And this is from an OpenStack design and deployment guide from a vendor who shall not be named. But I was like, last I checked, I don't have a full mesh of connectivity of my server ports. Like, there's stuff down here at this layer that actually connects these servers together. But there's no reference of the physical network anywhere in that diagram. Because what we're trying to do is get away from thinking of that networking because it's, to be frank, like such a pain in the ass. And so, you know, if we do some quick math, we're looking at at least 5% of our entire infrastructure as a complete blind spot. I have no third-party software. I have no way to really look at it. Maybe I have some SNMP that's terrible. But I, I don't really have any visibility into it. But the power of OpenStack is the power of Linux. Right? How has this ecosystem been able to grow and change and evolve? It's because of Linux. We have standard kernel APIs so that no matter what vendor or what product or what set of tooling you're working on, it all looks the same. We can easily extend that open software. Nine times out of 10, what I'm going to take off the shelf is going to fit my use case. But that one time out of 10, I can really change my business if I could just change, it, change this software just a little bit. And that open software allows me to do that. We again have well understood user interfaces, whether those are common commands in user space, 
whether that's well-versioned structured output from commands. We're creating standardization and the ability to do things more programmatically at each layer of that stack within Linux. Obviously, it's highly scalable. And I have pervasive monitoring and telemetry capabilities. I mean, just here, I think there are at least three different vendors that provide monitoring capabilities for Linux, let alone all of the open source projects, things like Prometheus or Telegraph or Datadog or what have you. And they're able to do this because whether it's a Red Hat system or a Debian system or an Ubuntu system, they're all looking at the same kernel and user space APIs. So why don't we put Linux everywhere? The spoiler here is that I mean the network switch. So this is exactly what we've done at Cumulus. So we take the industry standard hardware, the CPU, disk, memory, and fan within that switch, and most importantly, that switch ASIC. And this is the same ASIC that you're going to find in an Arista switch, in a Cisco switch, and some of the Juniper switches. We also run on Mellanox Spectrum ASICs, which have pretty similar performance. You can ask us or Mellanox over here for a little bit more information. And we are the software sitting directly on the bare metal of that data center switch. And Cumulus Linux talks to that hardware, and we make that switch look like a 48-port Linux server. So I can do an IP link show and see 48 NICs. I can do an apt get install and install anything from any Debian repository on the planet. But if I'm coming from the network side of the world, we've also built a full CLI. And so our user space applications that sit on top, like any other user space application in Linux, simply talk to Linux. Again, these applications think that they're running on a 48-port server because we're using those same standard APIs, that same standard kernel interface, because we are truly a Linux distribution. So we have a full CLI to provide you question mark support, tab completion, all of the things that you're used to from a network perspective, providing layer two and layer three with VLANs and ACLs through IP tables and uh, VRFs and EVPN, and full automation and telemetry support through all of the standard tools that are out there, whether you're looking at Chef, Salt, Ansible, you name it. We don't have to build a bunch of custom modules because we just use the Linux ones. From a hardware perspective, we run on over 100 different switches from a whole bunch of different vendors. So you can kind of pick and choose who's best in class or who's going to give you the best deal or you know, who's the nicest, least pushy salesperson that you're willing to talk to this month. So we have a bunch of different ways to acquire hardware. Or you can just come to us, and we'll give you a turnkey option that's called Cumulus Express, which is just another edge core switch. But what we're here to talk about, though, is the streaming telemetry piece. And the reason why I pitch Cumulus for that second is because it's important to understand that our ability to do this streaming telemetry with our product NetQueue is based on the fact that we are purely a Linux distribution. And so I have Cumulus NetQueue, which is a Linux agent that can stream data to a time series database. So I can take my data center of both compute and network, whether that's RHEL, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE underneath, I can take that NetQueue server, that streaming telemetry database, and have it talk to both the network and the compute layer, again, using the same APIs, the same interfaces, the same intelligence, because our kernel is the same as the Debian kernel, as the same as the Red Hat kernel. We don't want to change it like everybody else in networking, where they're trying to build something custom on top, which means there is no integration. We are Linux. You know, the be best example here is we invented the VRF for Linux. We've had we've namespaces for a long time, but it's the wrong model for networking. There was no VRF in Linux, so one of my colleagues who's here today invented the VRF, went to the community, got it implemented, wrote the code, submitted it, it's upstream, and you can now run it on your server, and that's how we implemented VRF. Because that that idea of Linux at the core is so powerful. So I can record and stream Linux Netlink and kernel events, plus a bunch more information, as they happen in real time. And Netlink is that original pub sub model, where as things happen, as an IP address is added, as a MAC address changes, everybody that cares about it in the kernel listens, records that event. Our agent records that event, just like anybody else, and streams it off to the database. 
As I mentioned, we're supported on Cumulus Linux, as well as just about any server-side Linux distribution. And now I can get data, events, and validations across both network and compute. I no longer have these two different camps that don't talk to each other. I have unification for the first time. So I can do something from anywhere in the network. I can start to ask questions of that database. Like, show me the inventory of all the devices in the system. And I can see, well, I've got a set of Cumulus Linux server, uh, switches and some Ubuntu servers. Because Linux is the language of the data center, I can do event tracing and one-line validations. This looks terrible, but you can come over to our booth and I'll show you more. Actually, for those of you who are willing to give us an extra 15 minutes of your time, you get one of these sweet t-shirts if you were willing to watch a NetQ demo from, where's Sutharsan? I'm making Sutharsan do all the demos. He's not very happy about that. But I can look at events over time. So I can say, what changed in the last minute? What changed between yesterday at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m.? Anywhere in the fabric or on this one device. I can ask here at the bottom, which you definitely can't read, let's do something like NetQ check BGP or NetQ check MTU and have it look at every single device and every single link in the entire infrastructure, compute and network, and tell me if there are any problems, any mismatches between those two endpoints. So I can do something like I mentioned, NetQ check MTU, I can look at 10 nodes and 108 links in a single command and see end to end if there are any MTU mismatches in my fabric. I can do these not only now, but I can do it historically. So again, it's a time series database. So I can say NetQ check MTU, look right now at the current state of the infrastructure and tell me whether or not there's an MTU mismatch. But what about 20 minutes ago before my trouble ticket got reported? Was there an MTU mismatch then? What did the state of the BGP neighbors look like an hour ago? I can do event tracing, again, looking at those events across both compute and network. So here, in an OpenStack environment, running NetQ on my server, I can actually see VMs and their associated TAP interfaces generated and changed. Trust me that this is JSON output, but we also provide structured data for everything that we're giving you information to. So even if you have your own set of telemetry tools and monitoring agents, you could just use NetQ as a, like a third-party data broker where I have this one spot to hit and query to get structured data out and ask it questions about, again, anything in that fabric. We also have a GUI that we've come out with, a full graphical dashboard that we're expanding on here. So if you want a GUI for NetQ, that's definitely a possibility. And I can look at something like the events I saw earlier, these two red events, failed BGP peers, and I can map those straight to the events and the alarm seen within the GUI. And really what this all comes down to is if we look at how infrastructure is built in the enterprise versus how infrastructure is built for web scale organizations, what they've been able to do is drive down the cost of operations and the cost of networking. And that's the only way that you continue to scale your compute environment. <laughs> and especially as operators, you know, our competition isn't each other. We have to do better because otherwise the organization will just go to public cloud. And the reason why is because we are looking like this and we need unified tools and capabilities so that we can look like the chart on the right. So if you want more information, we have some online self-service demos. We have documentation. Like I said, we're doing demos at your request over in our booth uh, just down the way. And we'll be here all week. Any questions? All right, thank you, everybody. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to test this uh, on, like, say, I have hardware that's compatible. Yep. Is it possible to just flash my own firmware and just test it? If you have compatible hardware, um, so we are writing the device drivers for that hardware, okay. so it has to be on our compatibility list. It's like the old days of VMware. Um, but if you have hardware that's compatible and you want some demo licenses, just talk to us, 
and we can work with you that, that way. We also have a free virtual machine called Cumulus VX, which has all of the features and functionalities. Layer 2, Layer 3, VXLAN, AC, ACLs, all of that. Um, you can download that, run it in KVM, tie it to Vagrant. Um, this is actually all the stuff that you saw was done in VMs on, uh, on Vagrant. Yeah. If there's anything else, uh, I'll be over at the booth the rest of the day. Thank you.